Hello students. So continuing with our lectures in machine learning. Today I will discuss about the structure of learning. So in traditional programming what happens is I know the rules that I have to be able to apply through my programming. I have certain data given to me and I check my results through the answers that I get that whether I am able to apply these rules properly or not. So I make simple programs to be able to convert Celsius into Fahrenheit. The rules are given. I test certain data and I get those answers. Now suppose I want to use the traditional programming to be able to detect the activity performed by a person and there are various activities that a person could perform. So in a simplistic way if I say that the speed is less than 4 the status is walking. If it is bit greater it is running. If it is between 4 and 12 it's running otherwise it's more than 12 it's biking. But suppose I want to detect the golfing what do I do? So I get stuck in lots of instances in traditional programming. Now here in machine learning what do we know? We know the answers and we have the data with us and I am trying to find a model, the rules according to which I am able to comprehend the answers from the data given. So here suppose I have a smart watch here with me. I am able to detect a pattern here that 1001 is when it, the person is walking. Similarly, this pattern for running, a different pattern for biking and a different pattern for golfing. So here we are looking for patterns to be able to distinguish between the activities. So this is a typical machine learning paradigm. So we make a guess, we measure the accuracy and we try to improve upon our guess by optimizing our guess and keep repeating till our accuracy is reached where we are okay with the model. So here what is happening, the labels are given to me, we have data and we are trying to find out rules. And once this model is built, then whenever I get some new data, I am able to make inferences about it. So I could have a model to be able to detect whether a person should be able to take a loan from the bank or not. So if I have a new person coming in with some certain attributes given to me in the data, I will be able to predict whether I should be giving the loan to that person or not. So there are n number of places where these models are used for prediction in various cases. So my components of learning are I need to first collect and prepare my data for modeling. I need to choose and train a model. So first my choice of model is done and then I train that model. Once the training is done from the testing part. So like I said earlier I have a training set and a testing set. From the testing set I evaluate the model. If I am okay with it, it's okay, we can deploy it. Otherwise, what we do is we do again hyperparameter tuning. So I will discuss all this in the coming lectures about these parameters. So right now you can just understand that hyperparameters are the parameters which I can control and I can tune them to be able to fit the model better. And once this model has reached a desired accuracy, I can go ahead and deploy it for further prediction. So typical use case. So suppose I want to find out uh, the price of an apartment and I have certain data here with me. So the first step is always data acquisition. I need to have certain data to be able to make a model on it. So I have the price. That's my prediction that I want to make. That's my Y part. Then I have certain attributes given to me for this entire data set. So I have the apartment name number, number of bedrooms in that apartment, the floor number at which this apartment is the criminal rate per year in that area, the pollution level of that area, distance to nearby educational institution is also taken into account. There could be other factors that you feel are necessary. You could take those values. You could leave out if you feel those parameters are irrelevant. So at the moment from natural instinct, we can understand that the apartment name number should not matter. So this field will be left and we could take the other fields into account. So my acquisition is done. It could be done from various sources. So I could do data acquisition from internal as well as external sources. I could take logs from web servers. I could take social media data. I could find out the data from census studies, census data sets. So I could actually do a survey and find out the data. Then I could have data stream from online sources via APIs could also be taken for finding out the data. So once my data is acquired, I need to prepare it. So data preparation, data wrangling is done. So this is done when we have to clean the data. 
here in this data itself you can see the flow number is referred to as g here and zero over here so for us it needs to be consistent and these are numerical numbers so i will remove this g instance and i will convert it into a zero Similarly, there may be some missing values. So for certain areas, maybe I do not have a pollution level. So for this, I could uh, find out, I could either remove the entire row. In case I have enough data, I'm able to remove it. I could remove it. If I'm not able to remove it, then for the same location, if I have the pollution level, I could take that. Or I could also take a mean or average of the area around it and put it here. So there, it depends on the number of rows available with me. Similarly, here we had distance to the nearby education. Now, if this is put into account as a feature, then it can have a lot of variation, right? It could be 900 meters, 2 kilometers. So, I'll need to convert it into 0.9 to 1.5. And this attribute is going to be something like this. So, ultimately in my model, my price would be dependent on A0, X0, plus A1, X1 plus a2 x2 it's something like this i'm trying to find out a linear regression value and here this entire column so the range of this entire maybe one feature is going to vary from right maybe right now it's like 0.9 to 2 but it could just go on and on so there's unnecessarily a weight attached to this parameter here and we would prefer this model to be simplistic because when we are going to deploy, then it should not be too dependent on this. So what we do is we try and change it into a binary value. So we ch change this into an educational institution within one kilometer radius. It's a binary field, yes or no. Because if I'm concerned about kids going to school, this kind of a radius is enough for me to understand whether it's like a feasible location for me or not. So this entire process is known as data wrangling, which is basically the process of cleaning and unifying mess and complex data sets. Data after reformatting can be converted into whatever for CSV format or a JSON format, which will basically be loaded into the data science tools that we will work on. Now, once my data is prepared, then I make a hypothesis to be able to model it. So right now, maybe my hypothesis is that my price is dependent on only these factors, number of bedrooms, the criminal rate, pollution. It's a hypothesis. And my hypothesis could have two outcomes. It could be rejected or it could be accepted. Basically, we say fail to reject and reject. These are the two options that I have. So right now, I assume that this is my hypothesis and it's correct. And I try and model it. So what will I do? I will try and create a model out of these three inputs x1 x2 x3 and i will predict the price y and i need to be sure that all these three attributes are independent of each other once this is done i have created a model then i will test it so the test set that we reserve from the initial data set is tested on my fx model which i have created now is it good enough is it accurate if not then maybe i will change my hypothesis i will add certain values of attributes i can remove certain attributes and go ahead and do the modeling again and we will keep repeating this till my model is accurate enough for me to be able to deploy so the accuracy depends on the kind of application that we are making a model for if we are trying to just maybe predict the marks of a student based on his previous grades or attendance and all those factors then we are okay maybe with an 80-90% accuracy as well. But if it's a medical problem where we are trying to understand whether a person should be referred for further tests, then we need to be very, very accurate. So once this is done, then you deploy the entire model. And maybe I have a set of team which is maybe expert in certain area and certain language. Then I need to deploy it into another language if my company that I'm making the model for has a different environment on which it is working once this is done it is deployed and during operations maybe a new factor from the data set needs to be taken into account then what we try to do is we use the initial fx model and we take a new factor from the data set and we create a new model here so we do not retrain the entire wheel we just take this model and retrain it with the new factor to be able to get the model again 
and then again reiterate the entire process for accuracy. So I will stop here and we will continue in the next class. Thank you.